Hi, how you doing? What's going on? Welcome to the replay. Welcome to Daily Fuel. Uh, my name is Bobby. I am the host of this group, The Spiritual Artist. Quantacy. Quantacy. Oh, look at him. Millions. My art is worth millions, Mikey says. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. And you're first again. Uh, billions, says <laughs> Rupert. <laughs> Wow, Mikey, you, you, you did, I thought you were shooting high, but man, Rupert just like knocked you right off the pedestal there. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, that's really funny. Ah, let me talk to the replay people. Hello, replay people. Welcome to the replay. And this is the spiritual artist Quantasy group, and you are in the replay. And uh, yeah, if you're watching in the replay, let me know. Put a hashtag in the comments. Hashtag I am in the replay. Hashtag I missed the live and I'm very sad. Hashtag I live in a weird part of the world that, you know, when Bobby's live, I'm I'm sleeping. I don't know. Something like that. Those are long hashtags, but you can you can make up your own. Those are not requirements. You can use any hashtag that you like. And I see that Ray is here and Rupert's here and Robin's here and Marsha is here. Hello, Bobby, she says. Hello, Marsha. Nice to see you. And what Robin gave me lots of flowers. Look at all these flowers I get from Robin. Robin comes in every day and gives me flowers. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate that. And Facebook user says hi. Who's Facebook user? Oh, is that that is Amber? Let me see. Is that Amber? Who is? I just saw it. Amber Kiefer. Hi. Uh, my art is worth the inspiration it gives. Slash reply. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Amber. Welcome to Daily Fuel. I think this is your first time here. If you can do me a favor, at the top of this post, there is a link uh, to Ecamm Live. It gives uh, Ecamm, the software that I'm using, permission to show me your face. Otherwise, all I see is Facebook user, and I don't know who it is, so I can't call you out. I have to look at my phone, and it takes a... Uh, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, if you can do that, you don't have to do it right now, but, you know, uh, when you get a chance. Um, and Deb is here and Hector's here and Richard's here. Okay, I'm going to ignore all you people now. If you're new to Daily Fuel, I'm going to ignore all the comments for a while and go through my whole spiel. And, uh, and then I'll come back and I will read all the comments. And, uh, and that's my favorite part of the show. So let us begin. <sighs> what is your art worth? What is the value of your art? Um, there was a conversation. Oh, she's not here yet. I don't know if she'll come. Uh, anyway, there was a conversation in the group earlier. Uh, Karina made a post. Karina uh, made a... I said that already. Karina made a post. And she said, and it was a long one, but I'm going to read it. It's worth... It's worth reading. Uh, I'm going to read it. And I meant to highlight the important parts and not read the whole thing. But anyway, uh, I've had many custom requests over the last week. Everyone is wanting portraits of uh, dead family or pets. Uh, that, that's not relevant to this. Everybody wants portraits. They're asking her to make portraits. Uh, the demand for memorial painting is really high, and it's hard to say no to people. It's hard to say no to people. Uh, but I know if I dive back into doing custom portraits, I'll be highly stressed and not allowing myself to reach flow state. Okay, so there's a high demand for it. It's hard for her to say no to people when they ask her for it, but she knows if she does it, uh, it's going to stress her out. So I currently feel like I'm making selfish choices uh, and painting sloppy for my brain instead of focusing on copying photos. Uh, but this is where I need to be. <laughs> this was funny. Maybe I should have started this with Dear Diary. Okay. And then in the comments, she wrote, uh, wrote, uh, wrote, it's hard sometimes. Uh, I know my sole purpose is to learn love. It's hard to balance freely loving others and freely loving myself. I know there's got to be a way. So it's hard for her to say no to people. She feels like if she says no, that that's selfish. But now she's not balancing loving other people and loving herself. Okay, uh, I did offer to teach people. Uh, this isn't. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to figure out how to make. Okay, that's. She's just thinking of a way to do it without doing it. But um, hang on. You ever get an itch on your eye? They're really annoying. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, what is our art worth? Okay, first I'm going to do before I get really into diving into what Karina said. I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between a commodity and something that is unique, a one of a kind thing. 
our art is not a commodity. Uh, it's just not. Our art is from the soul. It's from the heart. It is a each piece that you make is a one of a kind, never will be done before, never has been done before, never will be done again piece. Even if you recreate it and be like, I'm going to make 10 of these. You've got 10 one of a kind things that all kind of look alike, but they're all different because you were in a different state. You were in a different mindset. You were at a different time when you made them. It's, it's, it's a lot of people like to think uh, because when we sell our art, uh, we sell it in a market and the market has a way of thinking of things. The market being people who buy stuff, okay? People are used to buying stuff the way that they buy apples at the store. Oh, apples are on sale, so I'm getting a couple extra. But that's not what art is. And, and when people think of things, they, they think of like, well, how much time did that take you? Or, or how much uh, effort did you put into that? You know, and just so, so, you know, if maybe it makes, if it takes you an hour to make a painting or if it takes you a year to make a painting, is one of those paintings more valuable than the other? To me, the answer to that is no. Just because it takes you an hour to do it means you're freaking amazing at that and you can bang these things out really fast, but they're still unique and one of a kind and not a single human being on the planet can redo what you just did. We need to understand that if we want to sell things or we want to do things for other people, that we are not giving them our time. This isn't a job. This isn't, uh, you know, we, we are giving them a piece of our soul. We are creating a unique thing for people, whether it's something, hey, can you make this? Can you, here's a picture of my guy, my guy, my person, my dog, my whatever. Can you paint this picture for me? Yeah, I can bang that out in five minutes because I'm amazing. But how much is that worth? Well, I charge $10 an hour. I charge $100 an hour. I charge $1,000 a painting. You get to make up those numbers. And then it's up to the person to decide whether or not it's worth it to them. But you also get to decide whether or not you even want to do that. Because uh, you have to give of yourself to do that. You have to take a piece of your soul and give it away. How much is that worth to you? Uh, you make this thing, you create this piece of art and you give it away to somebody, you don't have it anymore, it's gone, it's theirs. They can take it, they can burn it, they could hang it on a wall, they could give it to somebody else, it could end up in a landfill and you may never know what happened to it. But it's not like a piece of plastic that you mass produced on an assembly line and people will pay five cents each for them. Somebody takes one and throws it away or gives it to somebody or it ends up in a landfill, you don't care because you made a billion of them and they're all identical. But your art is one of a kind. Each piece is unique and each piece is a piece of you that you can give away, that you can sell, or that you can keep. And it's up to you. And what you sell it for, if you decide to give it away or sell it, is up to you also. It's up to other people if they're willing to buy it or not, but you always get to decide what you're willing to sell it for. So that's, that's number one, is that what we create is not a commodity and we should never treat it as one. And it's not an hourly rate, it's not a this or a that, it's a, wow, this is a piece of me and I'm not willing to give that up for less than this. And you need to be okay with that. And uh, the thing I think that she was feeling is that to say no to people, because first of all, she doesn't even want to do this work. People are asking her for it. There's a high demand and maybe she's feeling it's a responsible thing to do. I could make some money. Uh, or more to the point, I think what she was saying is that people are asking her for things and, and she feels empathy for their feelings and she feels weird saying no to them because, uh, what, what did she say? I don't want to put words in her mouth. I feel, uh, I, I feel like I'm making selfish choices if I say no. Well, let me tell you a secret about selfish. Uh, we cannot give of anyone, or we cannot give anything to anyone. We cannot give of ourselves if we are not fulfilled. You can't give somebody something you don't have. You know, can you give me a buck? I don't have a buck. <laughs> I gotta go and get a buck for myself, and then I can give it to you if I choose. Can you give me a piece of your soul? Well, my soul is completely unfulfilled right now and, and I don't have any soul to give because I'm not creating things that are replenishing my soul, that are, are creating the flow state for me. I need to create the stuff that makes my heart sing because when my heart sings, then you can listen to the music. When my heart sings, then I create stuff that you can enjoy. And if you don't enjoy the stuff I'm creating, then go away. 
other people will line up. If you're making art and the people in front of you don't like the art you're making, you're making art in front of the wrong people. You're not making the wrong art. So don't change your art because the people in front of you want something else. Change the people you're doing it in front of. Oh, you don't like this? You like these things? Well, I don't like making these things. Bye and go. Find the people who like the thing you make. I opened this group because I wanted to do Daily Fuel. I get up here and talk like an idiot for 30 minutes a day. If you don't like it, then get out of my group. <laughs> I don't care. If you like it, then hang out with me. And that's that. So being selfish to the point where you're, you're making sure that you are fulfilled, that is the least selfish thing you can do. Because when you're not fully fulfilled yourself, you are useless to everybody else. The bad selfish is when you insist that everybody else does things your way. I don't like how you're doing that. Do it my way. That's selfish, you know? I don't like when people do this thing and I want to make it illegal. I don't like when people uh, act that way, so I'm going to make laws or rules and stuff that no one's allowed to act that way. That's bullshit. Everyone's allowed to do what, what they want to do for themselves. Including you. <laughs> You're allowed to do what you want to do for yourself. You're allowed to make the art you want to make. You're allowed to sell it at the price that you want to sell it. And you're allowed to say no when somebody is asking you to do a thing you don't want to do. Or that doesn't work for you. And so finally, the last thing was the, her empathy. She feels empathy for people. Now, it's not just that they're asking her to make portraits. They're asking her to make portraits of, of dead relatives, of, of dogs or cats or pets that have passed away. And they're like, please, 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 make this thing for me. You know, and her heart's going, you know. Well, empathy is good. You know, if you're seeing somebody having a hard time with some, uh, something and you can help them, help them. You know, if, 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 you're, if you're able to offer advice, if you're able to help somebody with a thing, clearly empathy is good. But when empathy becomes a detriment to you, when now suddenly you just feel so bad for other people that you're putting your own needs aside and you're willing to take pieces of your soul and throw them away and give them away, sell them for not enough money, how is that good for anybody? Because eventually you're just going to resent those people. You're, 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 the day is going to come when you're going to start saying no to people, except you're not going to be respectful about it. You're going to be like, fuck off. I don't do this crap for you anymore. Go away. I, I don't want to know you. Our work is not a commodity. It is unique. Being selfish is not bad. It is required. Because if you're not selfish, then you're useless. And too much empathy just makes you tip yourself over and, and pour yourself out so that, again, you're useless and empty. We can't be useless and empty and be good citizens of the planet. We can't be useless and empty and be artists. We can't, we don't know what our art is doing to people who are seeing it. You need to make the thing that's coming from your heart. You need to, you have to. You can't, you can't not. All right, that's that. The end of lecture. <laughs> that, that one felt different. Um, I feel like I was breathing more on that one. Uh, Deb is here. Yeah, a lot of, another Facebook user. Uh, and I'm wearing my glasses, so you got to hang on a second. Let me see who we got here. Uh, Richard is here. Where is Richard? Marsha, there's hello. Marsha, Deb. I saw Deb and Hector. And there's Richard. Good afternoon. And then, oh, that's Amber. Hi. Uh, hi, Amber. And then Rupert says, uh, even you can't redo what you just did. No, I can't. <laughs> even. <laughs> he's, tr he's trying to correct himself. And he did it wrong again. <laughs> that's funny. Um, take a piece of my heart. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, that's a good song. I'm sorry, I'm not going to read that. Uh, my art is worth my mental health. My art is worth my time and my energy. Good. Robin says, what? can't click the thing. Hang on. There we go. When Karina said it's hard to say no, and when, and, uh, and when she does, it's hard. Maybe it's because she still feels guilty for saying no. Or when she does say no, right? So she does say no to people, and that's not easy. It's not like, uh, you know what? No. Oh, wow, what a weight off. I feel great. 
No, now you feel guilty because you feel like uh, you hurt somebody's feelings or, you know, they're sad, especially with this thing. They want their dead dog painted. It's like, uh, you know, they, they, they start with the quivering lip, right? It's like, it's hard to say no to people when, when, when they're emotionally involved in this thing that they're asking you for. Maybe it's hard because she still feels guilty for saying no. True, she gained time for her art by saying no to stuff she doesn't want to do. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen and it still cracks me up when that happens. Uh, <laughs> damn, I got the giggles now. Uh, she gained time for her art by saying no to stuff she doesn't want to do. But the gain is negated if she still feels bothered in a different way by still thinking, yeah, okay, by, 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 okay this is great, this is great. Okay, so I'm going to practice saying no to people. I don't want to do that thing, right? Great, wonderful. So somebody says, hey, would you paint this thing for me? And uh, I don't want to do that, so no thank you, right? Oh, okay, I'm sad, go away. Well, now I feel like crap because now I just made them sad. They're unhappy that they're not getting the thing that they want. And maybe I even feel a little bad because, gee, they were going to pay me a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or five bucks or whatever. The number doesn't really matter, but maybe I could have used that money. And I just said no to a thing that, that could have just paid me money. It would it have really been a big deal. Do you see what your brain, your programming does to you, right? Do, do, do these things sound familiar? Even if you start saying no, you can still have programming that says, oh, you should have said yes, should have said yes, should have said yes, right? And, and, but if you did say yes, then your heart is saying, should have said no, should have said no. So no matter what you do, you're screwed. This is where energy work comes into play. This is where deciding I am doing this and I need to practice getting okay with it, right? You can draw a line in the sand, but... But now pick your side of that line. But on day one of picking your side on that line, there's going to be a lot of, hmm, should I be on the other side of that line? I'm not really sure. I'm kind of comfortable over here, but there's some good things over there too. I'm not really sure yet. You need to practice. You need to practice this. And you need to remind yourself every day. You can do affirmations. You can meditate on it. You can do all the things. But you need to practice it. Because the first time and the tenth time that you do it, there's probably going to be some part of you going, oh, was that the right decision? Or, oh, I feel bad. Or, oh, they feel bad. And now I'm sad about it. And now I'm not really getting into my work the right way. Yeah, good point, Robin. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Heather is here. Hi. I am finally here. Hi, Heather. How are you doing? A Facebook user says, yes. Uh, that may still be Amber. Uh, but I don't like to assume. Yes, it's Amber. And there's another Facebook user, which is not Amber. So good. I'm glad I looked. And then Richard says, you're not making the wrong art. You're making art for the wrong people. I love that. Yeah, I like that too. Thank you for noticing that one. I think I'm going to post that later. If people don't like your art, you're not making the wrong art. You're just showing it to the wrong people. Find the right people. Keep making what your heart wants. You know, Let's think about this for just one moment, right? Well, I've been saying this a couple of times. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to hit, hit this nail until I drive it right through the wood. Let's assume that the universe is really smart for a moment, right? The universe is really smart uh, or source energy is really smart or all of our spiritual beings are really, really smart. Let's just assume that whatever it is we think is out there is smart. It knows more than we know in our physical bodies, right? Well, we come here, I'm alive, look at this, oh, I have hands, this is really cool, look what my hands can do, I can do this or this or whatever, I can make shit. And, uh, and, and I really love making this thing, I love it, I love making this thing. Hey, do you like this thing? Nah, says the first person you show it to. Oh, nah, says like a hundred people, I don't really like that thing. Okay, well, uh, so what do we do? We think maybe the thing that I love making is worthless. Nobody likes it. Nobody seems to like it. So I must be worthless or my spiritual being is stupid or, you know, it's my heart is telling me to make something that's lame that nobody likes. Why don't we realize that maybe I've shown it to a hundred people? Well, there are seven billion on the planet. So a hundred is like 0.0000001%, you know? 
Uh, maybe I should show it to a few more people and, and see if they like it. You know, I, I'm, I'm here talking about the stuff that I talk about. Do you think that most people on the planet would give two craps about the stuff I talk about on Daily Fuel? If I did this in a different venue, I'd have people throwing tomatoes at me because nobody would care about this. But I said, hey, here's my flag. I'm doing this for people who are spiritual and artists. You like it? Cool. Come on in. Here's what I'm talking about. You like it? Cool. Stick around. You don't? Go. Nobody's tied up here you know you're not you're not forced to be here you're making art the right way you're doing it in front of the wrong people cool who is this i forgot already it is amanda i believe it is amanda hi amanda how you doing amanda there's a link up there you got to click it for ecamm i'm going to do a post later i'll link all you guys uh i say it in a less nice way <laughs> Oh, I think I like you. Um, I do that now. I've been very fuck off. It took a lot of crap to get me over it. Yeah, good, good. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm kind of with you. I I I will tell people nicely the first time. No, uh, the second time I will be less. I will be more direct. You know. Uh, but you know, here here's the other thing that I say. I don't mind people asking me to do things that aren't my thing anymore. You know, if uh, I have things that I do, uh, I have things that I used to do, and people will ask me all the time, like, "Hey, can you help me with this, or can you do that for me?" And in the beginning of my career, I felt like I need money, I need clients, I'll do whatever the heck you need, you know. And uh, until I realized I was doing this thing for this guy, I was doing this thing for this guy, I was doing this weird thing for that client, and I was like, I don't even know how he thought I did that, but for some reason, I was I was pretty good at it, and I. I could do it so I did it but then he referred me to people who also wanted that thing I was like oh my god I don't want to be doing this for this uh, this, this isn't what my business is so I, had, I really had to focus it down and narrow it down and then it was, the requests would come in hey could you do that thing you did for that guy no I'm sorry I don't do that anymore Really, I think with most people, as, as long as you're giving them a polite no, you know, but you got to be firm in your heart. You have to realize and understand that no, there, this is the line. I don't go over it anymore. It's hard at first, as Robin pointed out. It's really, really hard at first. Rich, uh, Richard, Rupert says, I can't click it, empathy. Empathy. <sighs> empathy is good, but man, it can really hurt you. Uh, Heather says, yes, no one is... No. What was that? No one is you. No one is you. We all have our own unique style. Your art is a part of you, so you are selling parts of yourself. Yeah. Uh, how much is your arm worth? Well, I got two of them, so I could sell this one for five bucks. You know, uh, parts of your heart that you put into the piece. Yeah. You know, here's here's the thing, though. I'm just realizing. You sell your arm, it's not growing back. But... You sell art and you get rid of pieces and now maybe you're you're regretting that you did that. The good news is that no matter what you've done up to this point, no matter whether you've given things away or you've sold it for cheap or you've made things that you didn't like and you, it, 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 none of it was a waste. Not, nothing was a waste because there there's there are endless do-overs in life and there is an endless limitless stream of energy and power flowing your way so it's not like oh man i wasted it all and now i only have this much source energy left crap <laughs> you know it's endless so it doesn't matter what you've done to this point it's not about regretting like oh man i shouldn't have said yes to that job or i shouldn't have sold that painting and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because everything you're going to create from this point forward is going to be built upon what you created in the past. So it's you're, you're always going to improve and you can make better choices moving forward. And, and you can trip up and make better choices again. So don't worry about it. Thank you, Heather. So what... Do you feel your heart is worth? Oh, so this was the the the, the ending to you. the point to the the period to the sentence that you said, right? You're selling parts of yourself, parts of your heart that you put into the piece. So what is your what you, what is your heart worth? What is it worth? That's it. That's the, that's the point. What what is your soul worth? You're selling your soul. What's it worth? Is it worth ten dollars an hour? My life. Robin, like the little teapot, short and stout, tip me over and pour me out. 
went, wow, there are 18 people on this live. That, that I think, is the highest we've had the, this group yet. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, like the little teapot, short and stout. Nobody leave. I'll be very sad. Like the little... <laughs> Like, like, don't leave. like the little teapot, short and stout, tip me over and pour me out. When our emotional resources are depleted by our not respecting our need to say no, when we need to respect ourselves, it's like being poured out. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You're, you're pouring yourself out for other people. And what happens when you pour out all the tea and you give it to other people? Buy tea later. What do I got? I got an empty pot, you know? I got an empty, but why do I have an empty pot? I have an empty pot because I was using fuel. I was using stuff that wasn't coming from my heart. I wasn't tapping into that endless energy to create. I was just manually doing it with my meat suit. Oh, I'll make this. It takes five minutes here. Here. Now I'm exhausted. Now I'm pissed at all these people. Get out of my face. I don't want to see it anymore. And I'm depleted. And guess what? I wasted all this time. Not really. There's more time. But I wasted all this time and didn't do what I need to do for me. So now I have an empty pot. Good. I like how you guys come up with different analogies to say what I said differently and we can put a different spin on it. I feel like, you know, sometimes the way I say things is my perspective. You say it is your perspective. It helps me see it differently. It might help somebody who's watching understand what the hell I'm talking about differently. So keep doing that, guys. Thank you. Deb. It's same for when I do a fee proposal for an interiors job. I often think it's too high. <laughs> uh, then it gets approved. It's validation. I'm worth it and need to value more of my talents. Yeah, I need to value more. Uh, my, I need to value my talents more. Okay, I know what you mean, right? Oh, man. You know, here's, here's the thing about that, Deb. Specifically about that. Deb is talking about like a corporate job. As somebody is hiring her to do interior design as she's written a proposal and she gives it to the client the the, the proposal says here's everything i'm going to do for you in the proposal and uh, and here's the number here's what it costs now here's the biggest thing that i had to deal with and i i always have to deal with this is the issue when i can't afford that number i personally could not take money out of my pocket and pay somebody that number right now and i'm asking you for this number who am i to have the gall to ask for this number that even i can't afford <sighs> Man, that one, that one, that one kills you. You know, that's why I'd be like, oh, well, that's it. I guess I could do it for a couple thousand less. Well, no wonder I can't afford it because I'm always lowering the numbers down. <laughs> Good for you, Deb, for noticing that. That's self awareness. Wonderful. And once you're aware of it, you can practice getting better at it and you can raise your numbers incrementally. Here's the thing that I did. I started raising my rates incrementally. I, I knew where I wanted to get to and I was raising it incrementally. And then one day some guy called me from Florida. He was talking to me on the phone and I would get these calls once in a while. And usually it was just somebody trying to pick my brain and get numbers. And, and, and I'd learned that I just don't, I, I don't play that game. So uh, I was getting that feeling. And, and he wanted to know how much a logo cost. And at the time, I was charging about $750 for a logo, but I wanted to be charging $1,200 for a logo design. And, uh, and, and, and you may be thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of money, or you may be thinking that's all you charge, but whatever it is, that's what I wanted at the time. And I had been incrementally moving it up where I got one client at 800, and then I got another client at 850, and now I'm talking to this guy, and I had just had this feeling that he was just picking my brain and wasting my time. He's like, how much does a logo cost? I said, it costs $1,200. He said, yeah, okay. Who do I, and he paid me 1,200 bucks. I was like, and after that day, my logos were 1200 bucks until they started going up. So you just, sometimes you just got to pick a person being like, I'm just going to throw it. I'm just going to throw it on the wall and see what sticks. You know, Mikey, my music serves as revelations to me. Spirit speaking through my, my inspiration. Uh, okay. So yes, it's spirit coming out. It's inspiring you, but you're writing to inspire others possibly. I'm sure I appreciate it more than just about anyone else. But if anyone wants to avail themselves of the experience with me, they're welcome to come along. There you go. That's the way, man. You're writing what's coming out of your heart because you love this song. You love what you're creating and you put it out there and who loves it? If you love it, listen to it. If you don't, then don't. I make music. I'm sure a lot of people in this very group would not like my music. I make what I like. That's it. What do you mean you don't like my music? Rupert says, or say yes, but. Ah, yeah, man, dude, thank you for this one. Okay, so here's the thing. 
You don't want to say no? You feel really bad? What's the path of least resistance here? Let's go back to Crimson's thing. I paint my dead dog, right? Oh my God, I feel really bad for this person. Okay, I don't want to just say no to them, but I also don't want to do it, uh, right? And, but again, what's, what would it be worth? Would it be worth your time to do it for an exorbitant amount of money. Well, with that money, I could get all the stuff that I want to then work on this project that I wanna do, or I could pay off these bills and, and relieve that stress. So sometimes there's a way to, to make it worth your while. So um, can you do this thing for me that you don't want to do? Yeah, I can do it, but it costs a lot of money. It costs this much, you know? Now it's up to them to decide uh, no, thank you. Or yeah, okay, it's worth that. Just like the logo guy, right? Yeah, okay, I'll pay 1200 bucks. And he did. And that was worth it to, for me to deal with a guy in Florida like that, you know? Uh, so you can, do, you can do that too, because the worst they could do is be like, no, 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 that's, that's too much money. I don't want to do that. You know, I mean, we can get into the whole when people try and talk you down and stuff like that. That just takes a lot of practice. But empathy, where am I? Because I see another... I see another Facebook user coming up. It's Amber and then Amanda. Look at this, two in a row. Okay, so, uh, bu -bu -bu. where's the thing? Sorry guys, sometimes the thing doesn't show up. Amber, uh, no, yes, Amber. Amber says, and people are asking too much of her. Yeah, they are. The, 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 and again, it's not, it's not sinister that they're doing it. They're not being mean about it. Nobody's trying to take advantage of her. If I ask somebody to help me with something or to do something for me, or hey, can you can I hire you to do this? I don't. I, I'm not thinking like, oh, I know that guy doesn't like doing this, but I'm going to ask him to do it anyway to fuck up his life. You know, it's not nothing like that's happening. But uh, I think the more you do something that people ask of you that you don't like to do, the more you're going to get known for doing it, and then more people are going to show up asking for that. And then what are you going to do? Eventually, you got to just turn them all away. And then you've, you put, you've invested all this energy in the wrong business. I've done that. It's not fun. Facebook user. Oh, this is Amanda. Amanda says, LOL, bubble bath. Reflect on what make you happy and feel good. Bubble bath. Did I say bubble bath? I don't think I said bubble bath. Reflect on what makes you happy and feels good. Okay, so this this happens sometimes, Amanda, where you guys comment something based on what I was saying, and then by the time I get to your comment, I have no idea what I said and no idea what you're talking about. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a bubble bath because I, I don't know where bubble bath came from. Did I say bubble bath? I do this a lot. I say things and then you guys are commenting on it. And when I read the comments, I don't remember saying it. And I, I don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes I'll watch these back and I'll be like, man, they, 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 they make sense. I'm sure your comments make sense. I just, uh, I don't know what they are. Amber says, I can't, no. Nope. I can't find how to okay you seeing me. Don't worry about it now. Don't worry about it now. Uh, later, I'm going to do a post in the group with the link. I will tag you on the post. It's just a quick link, and you, you click yes to the permissions. And then the next time you're here, I'll be able to see your name and face. Don't worry about it right now. I got you covered. Heather says, if you can't put your heart into a piece, saying no is okay. If you can't put your heart into a piece, then saying no is okay. Heather. I love that sentence. Thank you. Offer another artist or where they can find one. It's like saying, you know, I'm, hang on a second. Take a screenshot of this because this, this is fantastic. Offer another artist or where they can find one. It's like saying no to your kids. It might hurt, but it's for our own reason that's justified within our mind. You say no to your kids? You're a, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not teasing you. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, here's an idea, right? Let's take this a half a step further. This is great. Offer uh, saying, uh, oh, hey, yeah, I, I, I can see why you're asking me to do this, but, you know, I don't do that. But uh, you know who does is this person. So guess what, guys? We are in a, uh, we are in a group of artists here. Holy cow. So if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, uh, so-and-so has asked me to do a painting or a sculpture or a thing or whatever that I don't like to do, it's not from my heart, but are there any artists in this group who do that from their heart? 
watch the hands go up, right? And then you can put that person in touch with those people. You can do that in this group. Make a post and say, hey, who's interested in doing portraits of, of memorial portraits, uh, you know, of, of relatives or, or pets that have passed? Who's interested in doing that? Because I'm not, but people are asking me for it. The demand is high. Well, guess what? There are a lot of artists in this group who are like, man, I wish people were asking me to do that. Well, put them together. Let's do it. Heather, you're a genius. Oh, tuck in a, who's this? Amanda, tuck in a corner and try again. Tuck. <laughs> I'm sure this made sense in response to the thing that I said when you wrote it. I don't know what that was. <laughs> this, this, this is actually my favorite thing that happens is when I have no idea. And then sometimes five minutes from now, I'll remember what the heck you were talking about. That happened once with Kelly and the atomic pen. That was really funny. Uh, keep increasing the price for the thing you don't want to be doing and hope people stop asking. Or pay it, right? Uh, yeah, 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 it's a million bucks, okay. How do you know that the person asking you for a memorial portrait of their dog isn't a multi-billionaire tycoon? Can you paint this dog for me, please? Yeah, it's a million dollars. Fine, who do I write the check out to? You don't know. You don't know what's in their bank account. You don't know how much they want that painting. You have no idea. All you know is that, well, it would take me five hours and I guess at 10 bucks an hour, that's pretty fair. I could do it for 50 bucks. I could do it for 45 if that's too much. No, 50's fine. I would have paid you 100 grand, but whatever. You have no idea, especially with art. People who want art, people who are broke don't want art. People who are broke don't want art. They just don't. <laughs> Maybe they'll buy a print and bang it in their room. They get it from Ikea or Target, right? But they don't want art. People who are rich want art. We should all be rich, seriously. We should all be making art and putting it in front of rich people and just selling that. That's what we should be doing. If you wanna be rich, maybe you don't wanna be rich, then, then in that case, that, that comment is irrelevant to you. But yeah, keep increasing the price until they pay it, dude. Empathy equals empathy includes empty. Oh, I see what you did there, empty. Very, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't get that, but thank you for clarifying that. I will riff on this, dude. Okay, empathy includes the word empty in it, right? A little bit of empathy is good. We should all have empathy because uh, otherwise we would all be sociopaths or psychopaths or whatever one doesn't have empathy. That's not good. But too much empathy, if we are acting on empathy alone, if empathy is driving our actions, let's put it that way, right? We can have all the empathy we want. Empathy is just a feeling. But if empathy is driving your actions, then you are putting yourself second and putting other people's needs first. It empties your teapot, right? And it, it, it empties you. So Rupert, really good. Wow, you guys are smart. Oh God. Okay, here comes that thing. Okay. I gotta, I gotta gear up for this one. Okay, here we go. Not only do the people we show our art to say no, I don't like it, but they even think you're actually crazy or lost your mind type looks when they give, you can see it in their faces even if they don't say it. You mean when people look at your art and they don't like it, they're like, <laughs> you're weird, right? Which might make a lesser artist doubt themselves. Yeah, we have to keep to our guns and do what we love to do and while we work to get our art before the ones who understand and actually love it. Yeah, great. That's that's what we were talking about a minute ago. Probably that's when you wrote this. And <laughs> right? You're putting it in front of the wrong people. If they're like you're weird, you're terrible, you stink, then say, "Hey, thanks. Thank thank you. Thank you for the clarification that I am in the wrong room. I'll go find the right room." That's it. Richard. What's up, pal? Getting work is like fishing. The bait is the key. Put bait on hook, cast reel in. If you put the wrong bait on, you will catch the wrong fish. There you go, man. I want to catch this fish that eats worms, but what am I doing? I'm putting not worms. I don't know how to fish, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm doing something else. So, you know, uh, you, you're making the wrong art. You're putting it in there, or you got the right... Yeah, you, you got the wrong bait. The art is the bait in this case, right? And the fish, you're getting the wrong fish. Okay, good, I like that. I'm not a fisher person, but yeah, that's exactly right. 
Bubble baths are love. Get some Himalayan salt and rosemary. Whatever oil you want, put it in. It's like love. The, uh, was this Amanda or Amber? I can't remember who. Uh, -da -boo -da -boo. It was Amanda. Bubble bath. Reflect on what makes you happy and feel good. Oh, oh, you're saying like bubble bath is a metaphor for love, right? Okay, so it's like it's like uh, doing what you love. It's like being in a bubble bath. That's how I'm taking this. Okay. Uh, cool. Rupert. What about when artists, composers don't like the piece that turns out to be the most popular piece after they've passed, like hoists the planets? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not. I, I believe it is. It's one of those things that I, I think I heard once, and now I'm not sure if that was real or not. But Billy Joel, uh, like one of his biggest songs that people love the most, or She's Always a Woman to Me. Uh, is, if that, is that the title? And, uh, and he doesn't like that song. You know, and it's like not his favorite song, but everybody always wants to hear it and everybody always asks him to play it. But it's like, oh, it's crap, I wrote it, you know, so now I got to do it. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I he, here's what I think, because uh, I, I know like as a musician, right, that we'll, we'll use that example. As a musician, I've written songs that at the time I liked. And if people might ask me, hey, can you do that song? I I don't like that song anymore. I'm up to this stuff now. You know, now I'm doing this stuff. And uh, and, and same, same thing. It's like, uh, you know, maybe Crimson, uh, Crimson, Karina liked doing um, memorial portraits when she started doing it. Maybe it was a challenge to her. And then she mastered it. And she's just like, this isn't challenging anymore. This isn't fun anymore. This isn't making my heart sing anymore. I need to move on to the next thing. We aren't stagnant beings. We're supposed to be moving on from one thing to the next. If a piece that you made becomes a masterpiece after you've passed, I don't think you care, to be honest with you. I think you're like, oh, that was cool. I loved the day that I did that. I could relive it in Source Energy Land for the rest of forever if I wanted to, I suppose. I don't know how it works. But uh, I don't think you care, to be honest. I think we care when we're here, but I don't think we care when we're there or you know wherever it is. Um, Heather, Make a copy for a portfolio so you can keep the memories you sell. Yeah, well, you can always keep a copy, right? Yeah, definitely. Yay, I made it. Good, I'm glad. Nice to see you, Anamita. Uh, nice to see you. Facebook user <laughs> says, uh, you know what it is? It's hard to find. Here, there it is. Yay. Uh, this is Whitney. Whitney, hi. Whitney, how are you? Uh, Whitney, I got I to gotta take you. In. I'm not even going to say it. Whitney, I make... I make books of all of my art, so I always have my books. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. And this is Mikey. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Nice to see you. You in Paris? Uh, yes. Never worry, because everything is under supreme control. It is. It really is. Our source energy, our spiritual being, or whatever you like to call it, is smart. It knows what's supposed to be coming from your heart. It's telling you. You're being drawn to it constantly. You can't help it. I really want to do that thing. I really, 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 really want to do that thing. Hey, will you do that thing for me? Fuck, oh, fine. I'll do that thing. I don't want to do that thing. I want to do this thing. You know? Supreme control. Nice. Heather, these copies you could keep inspire you later. Yes, absolutely. Uh, wouldn't maybe bidding be best? Who's that? Time out. We got another Facebook user. Uh, I gotta take off the glasses to see this thing. Wouldn't maybe? It says Kelly Lorenz is watching. Hi, Kelly. Uh, wouldn't maybe bidding be better? That's Amanda. B ah, that's a cool one. Okay. Uh, you mean like you make a piece and you're going to sell it? People can bid for it like an auction. That's of course you could do that. Absolutely, you could do that. Uh, thing about the auction, though, is I suppose you know it's going to get to the highest bidder, and then that's what it sells for. But you get to pick the lowest bid. Bidding starts at right. I want at least this, so I'm going to start bidding there, and then I, I'm just going to get more or nothing. Good one. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Deb says thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Deb. You're welcome. Uh, Anamita says, my art is a gift. I have to find someone to receive my gift. Lately, I have been given so much support to sell my artwork designs for big money. I love, love this group because everyone is so authentic. Thank you. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. If you're making stuff that you love and you're selling it for big money, more power to you, I say. Do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Who's this? <sighs> 
Thanks, Bobby. Whitney. Uh, Whitney says, I'm glad you said that I make what I like. My art is me and weird. Yeah, I make what I like. You know, weird. what is weird? Dr. Seuss says you find somebody that whose weirdness fits you, and we call that love. We call that love. I'm a freaking weirdo, and so are you, but we have the same weirdness. It fits together. That's love. I'm a weirdo, and so are you, but our weirdness is weird. You're weird. Go away. That's what, that's what it is, right? Most people are trying to blend in. They're trying to be normal. What is normal? It means being like everybody else. It means being a commodity. And that's why normal people think of everything in terms of commodity. How much time did that take you? It took me five hours. Well, I'm not paying a thousand dollars for something that took you five hours. Well, let's see how long it would take you, moron. It would take you a lot longer because you couldn't even do it. Moron. <laughs> Oh, this makes me angry sometimes. Uh, thank you for that, Whitney. Robin, wow. That would make a great future Daily Fuel. Oh, God. Which one? Deb's concept of feeling like she is not valuing her talents enough and doesn't always know how to know how to do it. Doesn't always know how to know how to do it. Uh, sometime, something I think I need to learn and or know how to feel worthy of charging what others might pay. You, 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 you decide what you want for it and you ask for it and if they're not willing to pay it then you can lower it if you need the money but uh, chances are what you need to do is find people who will pay it Hector says uh, that, 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 that's a very glossed over version you're right that could be a good daily fuel Hector sometimes I ask clients what is their their budget and then I determine yeah well, that's a really good. That's a that's a that's a Sandler sales system. You want to figure out what their pain is. Why do you even need this thing that I want? And then you got to figure out what their budget is. You know, well, how much do I want for this thing to fix this problem of theirs or to create this art for them? And what's your budget? You know, and and here's the thing. Sometimes somebody might have a budget that is smaller than you would like. Well, can you still create something from your heart within that budget? Uh, maybe, you know, I don't know, I'm not a painter, so I don't know if this is accurate, but let's imagine that they want a portrait of something, and uh, but their budget only accounts for a portrait on a piece of, on a canvas this big. I, you know, I don't know if that's accurate or not. You know, it's probably even harder to paint small. I don't know. But, um, you know, but in Hector's case, I could imagine somebody coming to him wanting that grandfather clock that he built. Have you ever seen Hector's grandfather clock? Man, is that amazing, right? Compared to, hey, can you make me something to put on my wrist? Probably a lot less material cost, probably less labor, I would imagine. Still the same amount of energy and, and heart that goes into it. I'm sure if Hector's making something this big or the size of this room, it doesn't change how much of his heart and his Hectorness he puts into it. Hectorness. We all have to put our Hectorness into it. Just replace Hector with your name. Whitney says, whatever you charge, if they really want it, they will pay for it. Uh, just like when you go to the store. If it's what you want, you'll pay for it. The store isn't going to lower the price because they feel bad for you. <laughs> oh. Heather, you won Daily Fuel today. I've never had a winner of Daily Fuel today, but I think you win. Yeah, that's great. Lots lots of new Facebook users means more new people. Yeah, it does. Thank you, Robin, for pointing that out. I appreciate it. And welcome. Yeah, welcome to the new people. I don't think you said anything about a bubble bath. I don't think so either. Amanda says, oh, you clicked the thing. Thank you. Amanda, uh, see, there you go. Now I can see you. Thank you. Uh, it was about her not feeling good about stuff, saying no. Just reflect on what's best for you. Absolutely. Oh, and look who's here. Uh, my favorite graphic designer, if I can click on this. Kirsten says, I am so undervaluing my logos, it's not even funny. Yeah. I invest all of my energy into my job. Burnout is so real. I'm literally dreaming of PDFs and broken links. <sighs> the energy I'm putting in is not the same energy I'm receiving. I'm putting my heart into the wrong pieces. I need to shift my energy on my art, my purpose. I had a conversation uh, yesterday with my buddy Landon, our Friday call, 
something we he and I have been reminding each other of constantly is we are both building these businesses and it's like what do you want to make what do you want to make not what will people buy not what will hey do you like this yeah what should I put in it yeah this this and this cool here it is who wants it you know that's the commodity way that's the entrepreneur way of doing it figure out what people need and build it and create it those people who are able to do that the building the thing is not their gift their gift is the game they love the game of business and entrepreneurship they uh, many people who are true entrepreneurs don't even care what the business is what the business model is what the product or service is that's not what's relevant to them what's relevant to them is the game of the data and the figuring it out and the oh look at this crowd of people and the focus group and figuring this out and figuring that out and they want this and they want this feature and they need to fix this problem and look what we can create and bam we created it and now it's selling I'm out I'm done I'm gone I sell the business and I move on to the next one that's what an entrepreneur does except non-entrepreneurs people like us look at that and be like oh I need to figure out what people want well I can paint who wants paintings and what do you want you want this and you want this and you want this cool I can make that I can make that I can make that now I gotta make this crap and I don't like any of it what the hell did I do to myself they don't do that they say I love this part and I'm doing it and they do it and they make millions of dollars and they move on to the next thing and then they and we try to copy them except it doesn't work for us because our gift our thing the thing that we need to do is i need to make this painting i need to make this sculpture i need to dance like this right whatever it is don't do that nobody wants that <laughs> right and uh you know so we need to be true to ourselves cool kirsten there's a there's a path this is a daily fuel I should do. How do you get there? Because probably it's not a good idea for you to quit your job today and start tomorrow. That might not be the best idea for you. Uh, maybe it is, I don't know, but uh, sometimes we're just forced into it. But there there can be a path to that. All right, cool, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remember that. Uh, Anamita, Kirsten, remind me of that. Uh, Anamita, I love my weirdness and I adore you dearly. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. Yeah, be weird, be your weird self all of you i'm not just talking to you i'm talking to everybody and i can't click on this thing there it is hector today i was asked to paint an ar-15 i had to say no only because once i put it back the client would have extra screws once i put it back the client would have extra screws lol i don't know what that means <laughs> like leverage on you i'm not sure I, i'm not sure what that means i'm sorry Oh, Heather, uh, there's an artist in this group that does memorial portraits. Jason, I don't know how to say that. Uh, cool, there we go. I don't even know if Karina's here today, but hopefully she'll see this in the replay and she will see that. That. Thank you for that, Heather. Rupert, who first said some people are so poor all they have is money? I don't know. I don't think I ever heard that, but that's a cool one. Uh, Heather, why these things are so hard to I have to put the mouse over your picture and a, a, an icon pops up that I can click to put your thing here except I keep moving the mouse and the thing disappears what did I do not all art is meant to be understood by everyone no no Robin that comment about composers who have their least favorite piece turns out to be viewed as masterpieces after they died. I've been finding that for kicks. I sometimes post a few things I'm not sure are what I like the most, but others might like even if they're not my favorite. I found people liking them a lot. And it always mystifies me. The most likes on stuff I'm not so crazy about. Go figure, I'm always amazed. Did you like it at the time? You know? Uh, you know, here's the thing about the here. Here's here's the first thing that pops into my mind about that is that maybe sometimes more more people will like things that are more mainstream pop culture art. That's why top forty music. Do we still call it that? Pop music. You know, uh, is the the hits stations. They play the same songs all day long, all day long, all day long. And they keep rotating in new ones and taking new old ones out, but but basically you hear the same stuff for weeks on end. And 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 there's the it's formulaic music, you know. There there's a formula to this stuff to make it a pop song. And more people like pop songs than not, but 
you know, maybe uh, maybe you made some things that are pop pieces, you know? And there's nothing wrong with pop music, by the way. If you love making pop music, go for it. I've seen many people who love, love, love it because that's your thing. And it just so happens that you're making a thing that a million billion people will like. Great. I happen to make a thing that not a million billion people will like, but probably a million or two million. I mean, generally speaking, you know, but it's it's not, not every, I can't just throw it up on my profile and everyone loves it. You know, it's like, that's not what I make. Facebook user. <laughs> wow, this, we just keep going today. Uh, do, 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 so I got to catch up to this. Lots of new Facebook here. Yep, there we are. I don't mind. I'm so into, wow. All right. Uh, there's an, uh, where am I? Oh, uh, Amber, all my work is free. Energy is free. Amber, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. By the time I got to it, I lost my energy. <laughs> I mean, a banana taped to a wall sold for thousands because of the thought process of what it meant. Mind blowing. Yeah. You know, well, I, if you noticed, I put that Banksy picture uh, as the picture for today's Daily Fuel. That piece sold for $9.8 million in auction. Why? Did the person, maybe the person who bought it didn't even care about it. You know, in that case, it becomes an investment or a pride piece or a look what I bought kind of a thing. You know, to me, that is completely irrelevant because the creator got to create something from the heart and the process of the creation is the point. Maybe the point isn't even whether you're giving it away or selling it or not. It's the creation process. So you can sell your pieces for five bucks. As long as you're making the pieces you want to make, you'll be fine. Maybe you'll maybe you won't make enough money to live off your art, but you'll be you'll be making enough heart fulfillment, soul fulfillment to live off your art. You know, uh, and you just have another job or your money just shows up other places. Who knows? You know, or you could just be like, I'm making what I'm making and I'm selling it. They're all on sale. They're six million dollars a piece. Who wants one? Somebody's going to want one. Somebody's going to want you're the weird. If you're the weird artist who puts up all your art for sale for six million dollars a piece, somebody's going to eventually be like, what is with this person? You know what? I'll be the first one to buy that. I'll be in the news. I'll be the talk of the town. You have no idea. It's art. Keep, uh, I saw... <laughs> Robin says to Kirsten, uh, I love this, what you just said. I have no clue how to value my art. I need a daily fuel for that. Okay, cool. And Amita, normal is a setting on the dryer. <laughs> Ideally, it's ideal thinking, I figure. How many ideal thinkers are out there? I value artists who ideally love what they do. Cool. Richard, 46 minutes. Shall we all keep commenting to see if we can make Bobby talk for an hour? Uh, we are now at 40, 57 minutes. And I'm doing all the comments, so you guys keep commenting. Whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. Uh, unless it's a charity shop, then they might. Uh... Oh, the store doesn't lower the price for you. Yes. Uh, talk about the budget question. It's like the Bravo show. Say yes to the dress. Uh, the wedding associate says, is there a budget we should be respectful of? I like that way that they do that. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask somebody who's asking you for a thing, what is your budget? A lot of times they may say, oh, you know. Um, in business, when somebody has no idea what their budget is, then I know that they're probably they don't have a lot of money or they're not serious. It's one of those two. In art, I have not ever sold a piece of art before. So I don't, you know, that's not how I do it. I don't paint art and sell on commission or anything like that. But, you know, you can decide for yourself what the budget should be and ask them, what is your budget? If you ask them their budget, then chances are they're not gonna say the exact number that you know your budget needs to be because your number is an at least number, right? And uh, it, meaning that I need to get at least this number, but if you want to pay more, that's fine. You know, uh, so you ask them what their budget is and they'll, if they're serious art buyers, they will tell you, well, I have a budget of this. Is it under your number? Then you can decide, well, I can lower my number if we do it this way, or I can't lower my number. You need to come up, you know, or they might say my number is this. <laughs> cool. That's the number. Anamita, people 
people usually do think about normal. Awesome, amazing, phantasmagorical. Yeah, people usually do think about normal. About normal? I think I know what you mean. Uh, Ray, really? Okay. I thought you wanted, you're the one who wants me to breathe. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to make that. I used to do a lot of tooled leather work. When certain people asked how much, I'd look around and say, well, the youngest needs new shoes, so the price of a pair of shoes. Right now, I could care less about the money. I just did three portraits that I actually gave the originals away. My soul was so moved by the look on those people's faces, it was enough. And my favorite thing is watching others read my poetry and see their faces react. Better than gold. Everyone has their own value. Ray is describing a situation in which she is creating art from her heart and she is showing it to the right people. That right there is the, is the, the, the perfect scenario. Good for you, Ray. And you know, if 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 the money is not important for you from the art, then you can just say that I am creating from my heart, I'm doing my soul's work, and I trust that the universe will provide me the physical planet Earth resources that I need. And it will if you allow it to. So excellent, Ray. And oh, I thought that was the last comment, but it was not. Rupert says there's a Banksy exhibition in London this month. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen his stuff in real life. Uh, Heather says there's another Banksy exhibition in Chicago too. I'm not neither one of those places. Uh, and I mean to say yes to the masterpiece. Yeah, say yes to the masterpiece. If you made a thing, and it becomes a masterpiece. You could you could even, if you're still alive, right? Rupert asked if the person had passed. I don't think the dead person cares. But if you're alive and a piece becomes a masterpiece, you can capitalize on that. Hey, I'm the guy who made that, and now I'm making this stuff. Who wants this stuff? Greetings, everyone, says Facebook user, who is Shin. What's up, man? How you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, all right, well, Shin is alive. He just swooped right in. And, so, nope, Heather gets it. Uh, being you is what is important. Yes. All right, Heather, you know what? Heather, you won Daily Fuel. You get the booby prize. So, you know what, guys? Even if you comment now, it doesn't matter. Heather gets the booby prize for the day. And we're at past an hour, so I'm done. Um, guys, thank you so much. This, this was fantastic. This was amazing. And uh, I really enjoyed this one. And we have... Food for thought for others. Next week, um, we're going to, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to do more. But tomorrow's Sunday, so I'm, uh, I'm taking the day off. Tomorrow's also Mother's Day, so if you are a mother, happy Mother's Day. And if you didn't know it was Mother's Day, tomorrow's Mother's Day. So whoever you got to do that for, figure that out. Uh, I will see you guys. <sighs> Who's that? LOL. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. You you had the, the movie prize, but Heather stole it. And Heather, Heather had the greatest comments today so she just gets the booby prize for the day and uh you know what you can have one too and i'll uh, i'll see you guys monday i'll be around but i'll see you monday thank you so much have a great night